Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And today we're gonna to do a little product review. We've got a brand new toy, and it's called Deeper. Now I've never actually heard of this sort of product before. I think it might be the first of its kind. And what it is, is a, it's a castable sonar device. Now, uh, I bet some of you out there are thinking, hold on, castable sonar device? Don't you usually use those on boats? Not the case. We've got the brand new product, we're gonna unbox it first time, take a look at it, take a look at it for you guys, and then we're gonna go out fishing and put it to the test. Right, well we're on our trusty, totally awesome pool table. Hopefully you guys can see this. So here's the box that it comes in. Fairly well packaged. Kind of looks like one of those new phones that you get. This is obviously what it looks like. So it's pretty well packaged in there. We've got a, from, from that's the charger I guess, that one there. And there's a, there's a cigarette lighter one there that goes at a car charger with uh, two ports, double port. This is the device itself. Only small, very light, which is handy, I guess, if you're casting it out, you wouldn't want it to be heavy. So very light, uh, obviously comes with a little bag here, a little pouch that you can put it in, and it's got a drawstring there. Oh, it's also got a clip as well, so you can clip it to something. And there's obviously your charging cable that goes either into the back of this for the car charger, which I think is a really good idea because if you're moving between between uh, trips or if you're low on battery, you can charge it up in the car. Now, there's obviously a guide and instructions in here. Now, the at the top here, you can see it's got boat, bridge, and shore. And I believe if we peel this off, and that's got three different areas where I guess you put these, uh, which are the kind of grip points for it and you twist them in. So the boat was at the top, remember? And this is, I guess, to see how much it um, sits in the water. To, you've got to make it sit in the water at the right angle because the sonar comes out of these two metal pieces here. So it's sitting like that with the logo up in the water. And if you're on a boat, you're higher up, it would go there. So different fixing points, I guess. And it says here, it's waterproof, it's completely sealed. Now to charge it, I believe if you twist like this, it's, you can see it's tight, so there's obviously a good seal there. Open it up like this, and it's even got a thing that gives you an instructions charge every two months, just to keep it charged. And there I can see is a USB port, mini USB port, which I guess is where you plug it into charge. Now I think it's important you probably make sure it's fully charged to begin with. There you go, that plugs in like that. And this, this end plugs into the charger at the top up here. So I guess you charge that, fully charge it before you go out, especially if you're fishing, uh, you want a full charged battery. Now, this works via Bluetooth, this device. Now, Bluetooth is on your mobile phone. Most mobile phones have them nowadays. So you've got to turn your Bluetooth on and it works via an app. You see apps for everything nowadays and it works via an app. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire up the app and uh, I believe on the app it's got a simulation that you can run. So we'll run the simulation before we go out fishing, just so we can have a little look at it um, and get a rough idea of how to use it so that I'm ready to use it when I go out fishing. So let's take a look at the app. Well, I've got the app downloaded here. Downloaded it. It's a free app downloaded from the App Store. It's called Deeper. So I click the app there. Uh, it's got a nice home screen and it says here, Deeper was not found. Please select one of the options above. The reason why it's not found, A, I've not got my Bluetooth turned on, and B, the actual device itself doesn't turn on until you until you put it in the water, until it touches water, which I think is really clever because it kind of saves battery, really. So we'll, we'll test the actual device out later, but we'll, what we can do is have a look at the simulation because they have a simulation on the app. So I'm going over to Start over here, and this is great. If I go to Settings in the top right-hand corner, up here, and then scroll down, and just at the bottom here, I can see the words Run Simulation. So I'm going to press Run Simulation, and it's coming through here. I can already see depth reading, 7.2 meters up here, seven meters. And then I've got 21 degrees. It's got the uh, Celsius, the temperature. I can hear the beeps, which are fish icons coming in here. And it's giving me the depth reading. It's pinging me the depth reading of, of the fish that they've lo it's located. So 4.6 meters, 4.9 meters. I can see the bottom. Now I can't quite, that beeping there is flashing up here. It looks like the depth's getting shallower. So I guess I've got a depth warning there as well when it gets shallower, which is handy if you're in a boat and you need to know uh, 
when you're getting too shallow for the propellers or things like that. Um, this is giving me a basic, it's just a simulation obviously, it's giving me a basic overline here of the, the depth and the contour of the, of the bottom. What I'd like to know is the composition, and that's what's great about this, is over here, there's a small kind of settings tab, and if you press that, up here you've got different settings, it's got smart imaging, I'm on the basic setting at the moment, now it's got detailed here, so I'm going to select detailed, and instantly I can see on the sounder, look at the detail it's giving me now. I can see at the bottom there, there's green, which I guess is the, the composition of the bottom, which is weed. Now that's handy for finding areas of weed patches, or even if you're carp fishing, areas of clear patches in between weed. Uh, so if you're casting out. So that's really, really helpful there. And I can see the depths on the side, it, it automatically changes the depth. Big fish arch there. And looks like what, what could be a shoal of fish or in, in with weed, floating weed up there. And the great thing is over here, if you come over here, uh, it's got like a clock. And if you press that clock, it gives me a history. And I can scroll along here. And if I spot, if it, if it spotted a fish further back, I can scroll back like this on my history. And there, look, I can see where the fish were located. And it even gives me the time at which I located them, which I think is really good. And I believe you can change your history settings. You can even check, you can see the difference there between the basic setting and the detailed setting. So you can turn the alarms on and off. If I go back into the settings, well, there's a big, big arch there. So we've come up really shallow. Um, if I go into the settings up at the top here, loads of different options I can do. I can change my, the units. So metric, imperial, fathoms, or mixed. I can change the frequency. Now this is quite important. I can do it at um, a wide beam, or I can do the narrow beam. Now the narrow beam, what that does is it gives you more detail. Okay, but it covers a, a, le a smaller area because it's, it's the beam of the, uh, the ping speed almost is narrower, but the wide beam will cover a greater area but give me less detail, which you could use to your advantage in different situations. Now the re reason it's beeping when it was the depth, I've got my depth alarms on, so that was obviously set at five meters. So anything below five meters uh, would probably beep up, and that's why it's beeped me when it went below five meters. I can change that to well up to 40 meters, I think. The fish alarms there, when it locates different size fish, uh, it gives you a beep, you can turn them on and off as well. Fish depth, you, when I got those depth reading from those fish, again, you can turn those on and off as, as well. Uh, vertical flasher, that's quite good for uh, different sonar readings. Brightness, you can change the brightness. The data history, that was the bit we looked at a minute ago. And that, you can go up to 15 minutes back on your data history, which I think is really, really handy. Uh, and then you can actually connect a number of different deeper devices to the same app. And the other good thing is on this screen here, it's got a calendar. So if I tap calendar and give me all the uh, different kind of, I think, tides and things like that on the calendar. And then it's got a weather app as well linked to it, which is brilliant. So for my current location, it gives me the moon phases, the temperature, wind speed, everything like that, all on the app itself. Uh, notes here. If I catch any fish, I can make notes and log it on the calendar. And then over here, maps as well. Now, it probably won't pick me up because I'm indoors, but... I guess if you're out on a lake, it can ping where you are in the lake, which is brilliant. And sharing as well there, I guess, where you can share on your social media sites and things like that. So obviously a really, really detailed and well thought through app. And I like the fact that you can have a simulation just to have a go at it and play with the different settings. You can mute it as well if you get sick of that beeping. You can put it on mute and um, there's, you can change the sensitivity as well. There's plenty of stuff you can do on it. It's really versatile. So what we're going to do now is the other thing as well, I've got it loaded here on my iPhone, just so you can see what it looks like on the iPhone. So again, really good detail, runs really well and things like that. And I can see it's got Bluetooth signal up there, shows me the signal of, because uh, obviously it runs by Bluetooth, if you, the further you cast it, the less signal you'll get, I guess. And it's got my uh, the percentage of the deeper device, the battery. So that's really good as well. Um, I, what I do do, what I will do, in fact, when I um, take this out, is I've got a spare uh, oh, I've got someone calling me. It's a friend, obviously. I'm very popular. What I will do is um, I'll take a spare... I'm going to use my phone for this one, but I will take a spare power... They're called power bank things that you can plug your phone in just because 
Bluetooth devices, wireless, things like that, they do tend to drain your phone battery. I've got an iPhone 4S, it's over two years old, so the battery life isn't great on it. So I always have a kind of backup battery charger for this. But um, I believe it is car you can cast out to nearly 50 meters. Now I'm going to a place called Old Berry Hill Lake today with dad, and we're gonna test it out. We're gonna go Xander fishing, species I've never caught before. So what it is, is it, this isn't necessarily gonna catch you more fish. What it will do is it will put you on the spots that are likely to hold fish. So fish holding areas and areas where fish might be. And that's what's really important because there's only a, there's probably those of you out there going, oh, that's rubbish, that's cheating. You need basic watercraft skills. Of course, you're gonna need watercraft uh, skills. That's just part of fishing. But what this can do is it can narrow it down for you. And for those of you who don't have the time sometimes, when you're going fishing, you go to work, you don't have the time, this could be really handy, especially if you've got sort of a day's fishing, have a cast about, you can get a really good idea of the area you're, you're fishing and hopefully it might pick up a few of the fish holding areas for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Old Berry Hill Lake, do some Xander fishing, we're gonna go start fishing in the day and they're not really daytime fish, they're more nighttime fish I've heard. So we can give it a go and let's see what this can produce. Well, I'm down here at Old Berry Hill Lakes and I'm gonna give this little bad boy a go. So I've got it all charged up. I've tied, I've got 25 brake pound braid here. I've got a big, it's a spinning rod, but it's a real thick rod to toss. It casts 20 to 50 grams. So it's easily gonna cast this. I'm not looking to punch it out miles. Um, 25 pound braid, and I've just done a real strong knot there. In hindsight, I'd probably have used a snap swivel or a link swivel I would have used there and clipped that onto it, but I've just gone with what I've got. 25 braid, pound braid will be fine. So I'm not going to be casting it out in the middle of the lake because I don't think that's where the Xander would be. They're going to be near the snags and everything like that. And what I'm looking for, I'm not looking for this to find me fish. Okay, they don't necessarily just find you fish. I'm looking for what's down on that lake bed below. I want to know the composition. I want to know the depth, the water temperature. They're my main priority. So I'm going to cast this out and get an idea of the depth over by those trees behind me. And uh, that way I can cast my sprat out there with the float and just see if there's any predators lurking around. So let's give it a go. Right, well I've cast the uh, deeper fish finder out there now. And the great thing is, is it actually turns itself, it kind of turns on when you cast out, when it hits the water. So I've cast it out near the snags. I've got it set there. I'm now going to go to my phone and go to the deeper app to open it up. So it's just connecting. It's connected now. And there we go. Here comes the uh, contour of the bottom. It's staying up here 0.9 meters. So roughly that's pretty much a meter deep where I've cast it. Now I can see already vegetation showing here. I've got this on um, the narrow setting. So it's gonna give me lots of detail, quite high frequency. And I can see there, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but there is some vegetation going through there. So I'm not moving it, this is just scrolling over the, because it's floating there, uh, this is just scrolling over the same patch. So this isn't me moving the deeper unit out there at all. This is just exactly what it looks like under that patch where it is. So I've got my, percent, my battery percentage at the top there, 85%, my Bluetooth signal there as well. It's telling me the water temperature is 13 degrees temp, degrees C which is pretty warm for this time of year we're at the right at the end of October now so that's warm temperature this time of year um, and obviously I've got the depth there now to me that's looking quite fishy there those weedy patches there so I'm definitely gonna have a cast with the sprat on the float in exactly where I've cast this deeper unit now, I'm not going to keep casting this deeper unit around because especially around the snags because it's probably likely to spook the fish so just one or two casts probably and just to different areas, just so I can get an idea of the bottom, uh, the contours. So there's the bottom there. Um, it's great because you can change, there's a setting here I can press, and then I can change the sensitivity and turn it right down. Yes, it will give me less detail, but it can help save battery and things like that. And then I've also got fish icons there. Now, if fish have swim bladders, that's the way it picks them up. So if this, uh, if the fish swam under that, or it picked a fish up, it can then beep to my phone and send a signal to my phone to notify me uh, that I, I have a fish, which I showed you in that simulation earlier, back at home. I'm quite confident at the moment that I might get a fish there. So um, I'm gonna get my rigs hooked up, get my bait sorted, and I'm gonna cast right out onto that spot. 
Right, so I'm slowly, really slowly retrieving the deeper now. And uh, hopefully on the screen, the reason I'm doing it slowly as well is I don't want bow waves or anything or water going over the top of it uh, to affect the Bluetooth signal coming to the unit, to my phone. So I'm just doing it nice and slow and hopefully you guys can see on the app there the depth changing. It's not going to change a huge amount, I don't think, because it's relatively shallow around this area. But you might see the uh, bottom composition change. It might go from weed to maybe a sort of uh, blank patch, which would more, more likely be uh, some silt. But um, I'm getting about far, probably about six yards away from the boat now, so I'm pretty close to the boat. I'm guessing it's maybe one over a metre now, maybe 1.3 or something like that just so I can get an idea in my mind of the drop-off from the island shelf. Oh. Fish on, mate. Fish, fish on, fish on. on. <laughs> so the... So Dad just tells me, I'll just oh, yeah. take that rod there and give it a twist. Nice and smooth, nice and smooth, nice and smooth. We don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's, I don't think it's huge because it's kicking a lot. But just keep the pressure on it. The, the, where's the net? Because <laughs> we've got here. nothing organised. We're doing the echoes there. He's already here. I want to see what it is. I don't know what it is. There's a the float, guys. There's the float. Something's definitely on there. What is this fish? Well, it's not a decent Could time. it be a Z? Well, not that easy, surely. <laughs> oh, 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 I've got no net. Hang on, guys. Mike is on to his first head, it's going to be a PB, Can nice and smooth. Just to prove it. Oh, I just saw a flash of it then, that's all I saw. They oh, no, I saw his eye then, slowly, 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 slowly. Slowly, get in my beauty. That's a nice, nice head, I told you it's a nice fish. It's a nice one, man. Look at that, fellas, in the net. My first ever, first ever yeah. Xander. I've never seen one in real life, let alone caught one. I'm going to get it on the uh, unhooking mat. Yeah, he looks decent. And let's show decent. you guys, and we'll get it weighed as well. A totally awesome <laughs> Xander, folks. Unbelievable. Look at the size of that eye. You can see they're night predators. That is awesome. That is a totally awesome predator right there. You see the th vampire-like fangs. fangs at the front. And I tell you what, they've got a really rough skin. They remind me of a shark. So they're not slimy? No, one way's really smooth, and one yeah. way's really, really rough. Moment of truth, fellas. We are clear, and we're looking at five pound five ounce. Really, that's not bad. Absolutely made up with that. Five pound five, five ounce. Five. That is awesome. Let's have one last look at it quickly. Vampire Absolutely. fish. Absolutely, vampire it's fish. Evil. They do call it the vampire fish. How awesome is that? Look at those teeth, man. I like his fin. Yeah, that dorsal. dorsal here. That dorsal, if you get it out of here. Ow, it's bikey too. Yeah, huge dorsal. Right, let's get it back. The other great thing about this app is it's got a history button there. So I can push this button down here in the bottom left, and it gives me a little slider bar here, which gives me all the history for the last, I've set it to 10 minutes. I think you can go a maximum of 15 minutes of your last pre-recorded history. So I've got the depth there at 1.8, and it even gives you the time of when exactly that recording was. So. I'm going back here. Now these, this disturbance here is more than likely where I had um, moved to the sonar and it's just had water go over it, lap over the top of it. So the Bluetooth connection may have been affected, but there is weed there as well. So that's looking like uh, kind of rough ground. And then same again there. And the really interesting thing which I found is we're coming up 1.2 meters here. So we're coming up to the depth where I hooked that Xander, which was about a meter or 0.9. There's weed there up near the snags and this is brilliant, look, right there. The deeper fish finder has identified a fish at 0.8 of a meter, I hooked mine at 0.9, and there is weed, and you can see a sort of uh, drop off there as well. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, there's no denying it's quite accurate. And to be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't really trolling it around, I just was casting and leaving there just to find little pockets, and it certainly worked. Well, there you go, folks. Caught my first ever Xander, and can I say that this device worked? Yes, it definitely helped put me on that spot. Bright daylight conditions, really, really against me, and I just managed to find that weedy area right in the snags, and thankfully I landed my first ever Xander, which is totally awesome. Now, I think it's a great product. I'm probably gonna use this a bit more. I'd love to use it pier fishing, I think, going around the edges of piers and looking for kind of deep holes, things like that. River fishing as well, I think, for barbel, finding those barbel holes. 
and just letting it trot down the river, I think that would be really good. And possibly carp fishing as well, to help find the areas in between weed. Um, I found, probably, you don't need to cast it miles. For me, I'd say 20 metres, 15, 20 metres work best for me. I'm not going to look to cast it, you know, 50 metres, really. I'm, I'm happy with 15, 20 metres. That was the ideal distance where it worked. Really cool piece of kit. If you guys want to give it a go, give it a go. I think it's pretty awesome.